Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna make a Christmas card, but you can make it for any occasion you like. I just thought it'd be nice to get a couple Christmas cards off the bat. We're gonna use some stamps today from our sponsor, Rubber Stamp Tapestry. You can find them at pegstamps.com. And what you wanna do is just grab a, a bundle of them and put a couple rubber bands around them to secure them. If you're looking to shop, I've got a coupon code for you in the video description, Frugal August 17, to save 10% off your entire order at pegstamps.com. Now set your bundle of stamps aside and grab a stencil. You can really use any kind of stencil you want. You can really use any stamps you want too. They don't have to all be flowers or anything. Um, this is basically some texturing effects that we're gonna do. And so what I did was I took this kind of sagey ink and just rubbed it on the back of my stencil. And then I grabbed an ink blending brush and I'm spreading that ink around. And what it's doing is going in the holes of the stencil so I get a nice soft pattern on the uh, back of the cardstock there. It's just a piece of white cardstock. And the reason I went with that um, stencil is because it looks an awful lot like the chrysanthemum stamp that I have in that uh, bundle that we're going to use for texture in a few minutes. Um, it's nice to be able to repeat patterns if you can, but honestly, any of your peg stamps are going to work. You're just going to bundle a bunch together with some rubber bands and you'll see how we're going to use that in a second for texture. I really like to use the ink blending brushes through stencils. I find that I have a little more control than a sponge, but you can certainly use a makeup sponge or any sort of blending tool that you prefer. It really doesn't matter here. So then what we're going to do is grab another color and I've got this really um, kind of deep pink color and um, I'm using big size ink pads because I have them and it's just easier to ink up a big stamp like that. And see what I'm doing is just getting this texture. I'm not worried about every stamp stamping well. I'm just trying to get kind of like a, a kind of like an overlay over this stencil background. So don't fret if it doesn't come out perfect. It won't come out perfect unless you press down on every one of those little pegs. We just want to get that cool texture down there. I wanted to get rid of some of the white in the paper, so I'm just going to use a gelato, and you can use any sort of watercolor crayon, pastel, ink, whatever you want. And I'm just kind of using some of this aqua color um, a few places on the cardstock. Remember, this is going to be cut in half for two different cards, so I just want to kind of make sure I'm getting the same pattern overall. And I've got a little bit of a, a pink color here, so I'm repeating those colors. I'm just trying to stay in the same color family, and I'm going to use a wet sponge to blend this. A baby wipe would work even better, but I've run out of baby wipes and I'm going to see how long I can go without using baby wipes for cleanup and stuff. So I'm just trying to be a little more sustainable in my craft room. And um, when you're using like watercolor crayons or gelatos with these cosmetic sponges, you can totally wash them out and reuse them. So it's not harsh on it like acrylic paint is. So um, yeah, you can get a lot of uses out of it. So basically what I want to do, what I want to do is just kind of blend out that uh, gelato. And if it smudges some of the ink underneath, that's absolutely fine. My favorite technique in mixed media card making is the layering. So what I want to do is add a textural layer here. So I scribbled out some gelato onto my craft mat and I'm just getting a scoop of pearlescent embossing paste. And the reason I went for the pearlescent is that I know that it's somewhat sheer. So I'll be able to see some of those beautiful um, patterns and textures and colors underneath. So I'm just mixing that up with a palette knife right on my craft mat and I am going to scrape it through a stencil. So first I thought I'd do this little diamond pattern, but then I thought it doesn't really go very well with the um, kind of organic shapes that I have underneath with the flower stamps and the um, the big chrysanthemum kind of stencil. So then I decided to go with more of a kind of modern um, mod kind of curvy diamond shape. And I'm just scraping that across. I don't really have enough, so I'm going to mix up a little bit more. And this time I'm going to just scrape some gelato uh, right off the stick with my palette knife so I get a little more color. You do have to take a little more time when you're scraping off from the gelato stick like that as opposed to scribbling just to make sure you get it incorporated. Now, you don't have to use gelatos. You can use any sort of re-inker or acrylic paint or pastel, whatever you have really that has color in it. You can mix it up with this um, with this paste as long as it's either a water base or a dry medium. You couldn't mix an oil base with this because it is an acrylic medium, but um, but your re-inker acrylic paint will work just fine. So I'm just kind of troweling it across and then as I um, finish up the area that's covered, I'm gonna lift up my stencil, line it back up again and uh, cover the rest of the page. When you're working with embossing paste, you just want to make sure that you do allow enough time to dry. Um, again, it's not a great idea to heat these with a heat tool because they are an acrylic medium and they could blister. Uh, so you do want to give it time to dry. And please note that the uh, color when it dries is going to be more transparent. So it's going to be a very sheer aqua and going to have a nice glimmer to it because of the um, the sparkles in there. It was an iridescent medium. And there you can see it finished. We're going to set that aside while we work on the next step. 
I love buying white accessories and dyeing them to match. So um, I have this roll of white hug snug seam binding, which is a really sheer ribbon that's very inexpensive. And um, what I'm going to do is color it with some ink, the same color that I've already been using. So I just smooshed my ink pad onto my uh, craft mat, spritzed it with water, and then I am going to um, kind of wet my um, ribbon and just kind of sop up that ink. Now the cool thing about seam binding is that um, you can kind of ball it up and let it dry and it will have a beautiful wrinkle to it. Now you could do this and let it dry, air dry, and it'll work just fine, but you can speed it up with a heat tool. So that's what I'm going to do here. Just dry it with a heat tool and as it's drying I just kind of try to wipe up as much of that ink as I can. I think it looks good if it's not perfectly dyed, if you've got some light spots and dark spots. So kind of keep that in mind. You can do it either way, but um, but and it will look pretty either way, but I like to have a little variation in mind and it will have such a pretty vintage crinkle to it when we're done that um, it's just such a nice accent, especially for a simple card. I looked in my stash for some die cuts and I die cut out a couple little frames that have mats that go with them and I'm using these pretty poinsettias to just kind of make a little um, focal element for my cards. I know I can get two cards out of the background that I'm making so I'm just going ahead and stamping two of these little um, focal points at once. Again I'm keeping with those same colors. I've got that nice uh, deep pink I'm using for the poinsettias and I'm using that same sage for my ivy and I know that um, um, the poinsettia flowers are the same as the the the, the, pet, the leaves are the same as the flowers except they're green, but um, I really like the look of the ivy with this since it is a Christmas card. So it's not botanically correct, but I think it looks pretty. So uh, that's what I'm doing there. I have a couple different sizes of ivy from Rubber Stamp Tapestry and I really like to mix them up. I also like to work on a pad of um, newsprint so that I can test out stamps and colors before I commit them to my final artwork. I thought that teal might be pretty, but it's really just a, a little too bold to be stamping right on there. It's going to dominate. So luckily I tested it on my scrap paper so I could tell it wasn't quite what I wanted. But it just adds a little interest when you can repeat the design of like say um, Ivy, but I can change a scale of it or you know, vary a color or something to give it a little more interest. So uh, keep in mind that you want to repeat a little bit so that you keep, um, you know, continue con like a continuous feeling for your cards. Now I wanted this to have um, a little more pop of a darker color. So I decided to take this little bitty branch and stamp that in that teal. And then um, to make the teal kind of carry that color over a little bit, I'm going to use that to ink the edges of the panels so they just have a little bit of a border. And I decided to go ahead and ink the edges of the mats too, just to help them match a little bit better. And you can also ink the edges of your mixed media panels as well after you trim them down. And I trim these down to three and a half by four and three quarters. Now I'm adhering this panel onto a um, that pattern paper, the same thing I used for the mat for the uh, stamped piece. And this mat is four inches by five and one quarter. So it'll layer up on a, a standard A2 size card and leave a little bit of the card base showing. That's kind of like how I like to mat it, but you can do it however you like. So now I am wrapping some of this crinkled seam binding around my panel. I'm just basically cutting that piece in half that I used. And I'm just tying it around the, um, the front of the card and making a little bow. Now I adhered that onto the card base. So you can see what I mean about just having a little bit of like eighth of an inch reveal all the way around the card base. And then I'm just kind of figuring out where I want to put my focal point image. And I decided that I was going to use double-sided tape and glue it right down over the bow. I did use foam tape to kind of pop up that white panel over the matting layer just to give it a little dimension. Um, and you can kind of see that right there. So I like to have a few just big Christmas stamps in my stash for stamping on the inside of cards so that we don't have to write so much and um, I am going to stamp that with that same color pink I've been using all the way through you can see I got it I got that stamp for 99 cents at Martin's um, many many years ago uh, but I just really like that uh, like that scripty sentiment for the inside of my cards and now I just need to do a little bit of embellishing I also kind of wish the bow was a little bit more substantial so I decided that I would uh, tie the tails in a uh, another bow so I'd kind of have a uh, you know four looped bow there instead of just a regular one because I think it just adds a little more volume and is kind of pretty 
And then for a final embellishment, I decided to use some flat backed pearls. And the extra bonus of this is I used up a package of flat back pearls, which I have been kind of using up for the past couple of years. So it always feels good to finish up a supply. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if so, check out our sponsor, Rubber Stamp Tapestry. You can find them online at pegstamps.com. Don't forget to use the coupon code Frugal August 17, so you can save 10% on your order. And I'll have all the details in the video description for that, as well as a full supply list and um, links to all the stamps that I used. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.